Hey everybody, I'm back. This is Saints Fan Reactions. I'm doing episode 6, season 1, The Wire. Hey. Hey. What's up? What you need? A little late in the month for this shit, don't you think? What you mean? My aunt, she had the match four. You stealing from me, Cass? What? What is going on? Hey, that that really cool. pisses me off. I don't know why he did that to her. I don't know. Call Jimmy. Why? What? what? Fucking girls read. probably struggle and you fucking throw her eggs on the ground like a shithead. He wants arrest warrants for Deirdre Crescent and the... You got a witness that puts D'Angelo Barksdale at the scene of the murder, the night of the murder. You got a ballistics match between the Crescent girl and the two dead mopes in the project where Barksdale hangs. Run with it. This weak-ass shit is not going to get past a grand jury. Charge the mope and work it more afterward. Call Jimmy, let him know. And he's, oh, he's allowed to be there. Oh, apparently allowed to be there now. As crazy as that is. Apparently he's constantly making phone calls to his parole officer. Because he's just there all day. String of bells page your number? Stinkums too, I'm pretty sure. Stinkum. I hope that guy is amazing as a character because I know very little and his name just makes me happy. Here's Smokey has now become drunky as well. He is both in one. Double your pleasure. He'd have been better off throwing himself down the stairs because now he's just going to get fired and lose his entire pension for being a drunk. To pretend that you were here? To fill out a run sheet? I know I missed a couple of days last week, Lieutenant. I've got a run sheet for you every day for the last two weeks. Twice in Carver's handwriting. Twice it was prayers, once it was McNulty, I think. They covered for you. But I won't. You were dumped on me, Augie. But it ends there. I don't dump people. Augie, that's the first time I heard his name. You either go out on those rooftops today to watch payphones with the rest of this unit, or you go over to the medical office and check yourself in. Medical. Rehab, buddy. Abuse. Either dry yourself out or go up on those rooftops wet. <laughs> He's like, I don't like drunks, but I do like drunks with guns on roofs. Sir, um, I'm going to, uh, good luck with the case. <laughs> He'd rather go to rehab? I mean, honestly, that's better for everybody. But I'm surprised the show did that. I wanted to see a reckless drunk on a rooftop. Like just for that amount of copper, a couple hundred bucks. Literally, just in scrap. If you know someone that could use it and resell it, you'll get even twice that, three times that. Just plain scrap value is hundreds of dollars. You could go to put up or shut up time, Lieutenant. Either you step up, you send us all home. So this is on me. I don't see anyone else in charge of this detail. <laughs> Rawls is a major. Rawls is an asshole. My point is, he ranks me on this. The chain of command might mean nothing to you, McNulty. I'm putting $500 in your hand for doing the relay. Put $500 in Wee Bay and Bird's hand for doing the muscling up. Oh, uh, so he got a bonus. I guess it, maybe that will make him feel not so bad anymore. That makes it all all right, right? Couple, couple hundred, couple thousand dollars spread around makes torturing a man all right. Most stuff. Put that good cup of line. Back into them row houses he's fixing up. And then... Take it back out. Take it back out. 
We creep back in there and steal that shit, right? Back what happened there. all the time? New builders came in the area and they had to be warned. If they Good. didn't, they were screwed. They had to build the house from the outside in. It's not usually done that way. That boy ain't got no luck. There is a difference between bad luck and just being flat out stupid. People tell me that all the time. Could you believe my luck? No, you put yourself in a horrible position. Like, that is supposed to happen. You're lucky you didn't get caught the first 10 times you did it. They got pissed because I wasn't paying them. So Sterling, he started shaking up the vials, handing off the cash she was selling on the side. Oh, you ain't tell anybody. shit. He know. saved her if life. Them, the they girl with the eggs. They're going to take a baseball bat to Sterling. Probably one to Cassandra, too. It's too much drama, right? So Sorry, D. You stage. are right. So why didn't you that was pretty slick. I thought he was, like, jealous. I thought, like, some no-name girl he was just jealous of and crushed all her eggs like an asshole. He saved her life. Aww. They would have killed her and her boyfriend. Uh, is it like shot in his eye? Or did they like... T it looks like you took a bottle, smashed the end off, and like put the jagged end and dug out the eye. That sounds horrible, and why do I go there? I don't know. But I've seen enough horror movies to... It looks like that kind of wound. And I've seen that in horror movies with the bottle and stuff. Pay it back, Omar. Pay it back. This is honestly not the direction I saw this going at all. I thought Omar was, like, using people and, like, going to play both sides. He is on a mission. This is awesome. Now they got Bubbles and Omar. And Omar just jumped the ranks big time. When did you last see Brandon? Tuesday. Round seven, maybe later. They're going to they're gonna piece together the phone call action. There was a lot of action. He got snatched up from there. And the Greeks on Baltimore Street? They like to play them pinball games to death. And it came from that po phone. He fight, but you arrest. You saw him get arrested? On Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday, yes, yes, Tuesday. They're impersonating they cops? Cops, they, they handcuffed them. Are there dirty cops or did they impersonate cops? No. So they got cops on the take? That are actually arresting people to kill? Like, it's one thing if you have a cop do something dirty, which is still wrong, but you literally have cops bringing you people to murder? It's a match. I want to know who the cops were. If it's Carver and Herc, oh my God. You're going to cross And you ain't afraid to go into court downtown and testify against one of Barksdale's people. Oh, I don't scare. The fact is that while Lieutenant Daniels and his merry band are lost in the swamps playing with beepers and payphones and body mics, my people have developed information that ties Barksdale to three killings. If he can't convict or if the Barksdale kid doesn't flip, then it's too late to do anything else. Avon Barksdale changes up his pattern and the wiretap dies. And at that point, there isn't going to be a thing that you or me or Rawls here is going to be able to say to that goddamn judge. It's the best way to pitch it. He doesn't drink anymore, doesn't drink on duty, doesn't drink and drive, detective? Major, you gotta help me on this, Michael. He's gonna come down on McNulty just to stop the case so he can get some praise. He wants to corrupt, I mean, just like totally shatter McNulty. Granted, McNulty has a severe drinking problem and does drive drunk and probably work drunk, but... He's getting the job done, and Rolls is doing it for selfish reasons. The murder warrant's on hold. The deputy gave us another month. Also, whoever that was you brought in here today gave himself up as an eyewitness in the Gantt murder. Well, Omar. And Greg said to tell you she'd write it up in the morning. Lieutenant. Good job, Lieutenant. Thanks. McNulty loves you. It cost you? Doesn't it always?
Rest in peace, Brandon. All right, so that was episode six of The Wire. Very interesting. So it, in the beginning, I said, I wonder if they're going to actually show it or just start on the aftermath. And they started right on the aftermath. Uh, they tortured the crap out of him and killed him. They're using him to make a point to Omar and everyone else and are definitely still probably looking for Omar. That's why Omar is probably like, okay with helping the cops at this point because he's probably got nothing to lose at this point. The whole dynamic though is going to change now that Omar is working with the cops. Like Bubbles was a small time crook, like drug using crazy person. I love him, love the character, but now you got a guy like Omar on your side. Omar probably knows everyone and everything that goes on. He's I know he's related to one of them. I don't want no one tell me because I'll figure it out. I don't want to go back and look either. I'll just figure it out through the course, natural course of things. But I could have sworn in like episode one or two, they mentioned Omar and it they said it was one of the higher ups brothers or cousins, but I could just be wrong. The biggest thing here was Daniel's got their back. Daniels like doesn't want to get his hands dirty. Basically, he doesn't want to step on toes. He doesn't want to piss anybody off. And he actually stepped on Rolls's toes in this one. Rolls is the guy that just told that other cop to basically get something dirty on McNulty to shut him down. So this is going to come back because Rolls is pissed off. McNulty's gonna probably like get busted on like a drunk driving, hit someone, kill them, go to jail, and we're gonna have McNulty in jail for a season or something. All I know is it ain't good. Michael B. Jordan is clearly not liking the life. It's like he's one of those, I mean, I don't blame him. He's young and it probably was like one of those things when he was growing up, like I want to be like them. And now when he's actually seeing it firsthand, he's like, this is horrible and it's affecting him. Like he's literally telling D that like, he can't like sleep at night and it's like all he sees is like the kid with the one eye looking at him. Like the one eye was like the window to his soul or something. Because he wants out, I'm thinking something really bad's gonna happen to Wallace. And being as I never heard of him, see, this is where not watching the show for 15 years hurts me, maybe. Because I almost feel like since I'd never heard of Michael B. Jordan in the show, that he dies off early. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I ha- maybe people have said it to me a hundred times and I never thought about it because in all honesty, Michael B. Jordan has only became really famous recently. Like Creed propelled him and then Black Panther like made him like a superstar overnight. And then he did Creed 2, which I believe was a great movie and I'm pretty sure financially did well in the theater. And now they're doing Black Panther 2 and I just heard, spoiler alert, that he's in it. He died, I thought, in part one, but it could just be flashbacks. But they probably were like, Black Panther 1 was so successful, we need to have this guy in it, aka, let's have flashbacks, or they just did some crazy superhero stuff, or the snap time, bring him back to life. Maybe they righted what once went wrong, like Sam Beckett from Quantum Leap. So, I'm going to end that here. I hope you enjoyed it. Comments below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.